Welcome, Jeff in Carpishin. I'm at a date ticket called Orchard. I couldn't get down my syndicate, but I've got 48 hours here, so hopefully I'll catch something. Let's go. Well, I finally figured out where I want to go. Uh, when I turned up, I had a look around the lake that I actually booked on, and there was quite a few people on, and the lake next door looked like it was quiet. It was hardly anyone on it. So I had a look around, spoke to a few people, and they said, the carp were jumping out down here. Had a look around, and I seen fish jumping out, and I thought, yes, that's where I want. That's where I want to go. I've seen loads of them jumping out in between these four islands, and in the open water and against the islands. So I thought, that is where I want to be. I pitched up in the, the widest swim as well, so I can see the most water. So uh, yeah, so hopefully I can make a change if I need to. The weather is quite warm at the moment as well, so I'm hoping that will play into my hands and I'll catch a few carp. It's going to be cold at the end of the session, which is going to be a bit, a bit of annoyance really, because I think that's going to put them off a little bit, but hopefully I'll get a carp or two. Most of the carp I've seen jumping out are doubles, really. Um, I haven't really seen anything really big jumping out. I've never fished this lake before, so I'm hoping that I can get a few bites. It doesn't matter if they're not that big. I decided after seeing those carp jumping out, what I figured out was where they was mostly jumping on this side of the lake. They started to jump on the other side towards the other island, but mostly in the middle of the lake. Um, so what I've done is I've decided to put one a couple of feet from the island where I saw them boshing out, and I put one about seven foot away from it into the sort of open water. I'm hoping that that will do something um, I've actually decided to put a lot of bait along there, I've got about seven spums all along that area because I've seen lots of them boshing and they're moving as well so I'm hoping they will get down and start feeding at some point. Bait I'm fishing is maggots and what I've done is I've put a little uh, wafter dumbbell and I've just tipped them off with maggots on the Ronnie rig of course. The only rig I seem to be using at the moment. Um, and what I've done is I've actually spotted out a mixture of ground down boilies, chopped up boilies, um, I put molasses in there as well uh, and uh, all got some mixed pellets in there and I've also put some, ma obviously I've put maggots in, I've put a couple of handfuls of maggots, I don't want to go crazy on them because I don't really want all my bait just to be maggots because otherwise I might as well just fish with a couple of maggots on the hook or a couple of maggots on the hair and that's not what I want to do, I want them grubbing around, picking up all sorts of bits. Maggots is the main thing but I want them to pick up the chops and the crumb and I have also want them to pick up the little pellets, I just want them grubbing around and moving uh, otherwise they just sort of sit there and don't really do anything and they don't really want to feed that much. If I'm just using maggots then I think it's a bit boring as well, I think mixing it up and putting bits of, bits of bobs in there um, just keeps them going, and keeps them interested. There isn't really many nuisance fish in here so I'm hoping that it won't get picked up that much. There's a few little roach and stuff because there's catfish in here as well and they have put a few roach and stuff like that in these lakes but I've, I very doubt they're going to be messing around my baits too much. I've actually caught a maggots on here in these lakes before. On a, on a lake on this complex I actually had carp up to 23 pound on maggots just tipping off a little dumbbell um, so it does work in these venues. Well, I've known you think, um, evening is drawing in now. Um, I have seen carp jumping out um, uh, quite a lot actually. Um, I'm the area where I'm fishing uh, just beyond a little bit but mostly I keep seeing them jumping in that area so I still think that that's the best area to be in and hopefully tomorrow I'll get something uh, we can get a bite any time on these lakes but I reckon I'll probably get a bite during the night 
or in the morning really I think in the morning as well uh, well, we'll see really now if I don't get anything by tomorrow, at 12 tomorrow then I'll probably make some changes um, I might try a brighter hook bait underneath the maggots um, yeah, and I might try a different area or I might try a different spot um, or something like that or I'll, I'll keep playing around and uh, you know I, I'm just gonna keep at it I, I do think the fish will move on to me but if they don't I don't get anything I can make some changes and tweaks and see if that works as well so uh, let's see if I get anything overnight hopefully I do Well, nothing really happened last night. I did hear a few carp jumping out all over the place, really, not in just one area. They were everywhere jumping out. Uh, a couple of line bites, but that is about it. Nothing really happened. It's pretty boring, really. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, it's about, it, it's come up to 8 o'clock at the moment, so. Uh, my plan is probably going to be that I'm going to give it another half an hour, maybe an hour, if I think that there's a chance of a bite. Um, bring them in, refresh the hook baits, get them back out again, um, and give it until 12. And if nothing happens at all by then, then I'm going to make some tweaks and some changes. Well, I'm going to have a little think about that, um, what that change could be. Um, I've been looking out for little possible different areas as well to target. Um, and leave one, maybe I'll leave one rod on that spot and move a rod somewhere else where I've I have seen a few fish jumping on um, other islands and other little channels as well so there's other areas to target uh, yeah I just think at the moment they're not, they're not really feeding that much um, they're jumping and they're showing you, you can see where they are but they're just not going down and feeding hoping sometime today they'll just switch on and start feeding but we'll see. Well, I was about to bring rods in and uh, give them a recast, um, and I started seeing a few carp jumping out in the middle. Um, I did see them jump out yesterday around about the same sort of time. Um, I think it was a bit later, maybe an hour from now, when uh, yesterday uh, I saw them saw them jumping out in a similar sort of area. Um, but then I started seeing fins and their backs coming out for some reason. They're sort of on the surface, and I've seen them swimming around as well, uh, which is really weird, um, considering that it's near December and uh, they're presently on the surface. I don't know if it's an oxygen problem or it's just because the air temperature is warmer than the water temperature, and they're sort of trying to come up to warm themselves up. I decided to put a zig out there because I've seen them on the surface. Um, but they are dropping down a little bit as well, so I've put a three foot zig out So I'm around about sort of half a foot to a foot under the surface What I've done is there's a bit of black foam on there, which is my favorite um, on the zig But what I've done is I've put on about four maggots onto the end To give them something a bit different on the zig um, And I've cast it out pretty much where I've seen the fish uh, They're still there. They're still jumping around. They're still swimming around the surface. I haven't had a take yet um if it is an oxygen problem I'm probably more likely not to get a take and this will be a really hard session because when it, the oxygen gets low they just don't want to feed at all um, I'm hoping that's not the case and I'm just hoping that maybe the weather changing or I don't know I'll see but hopefully I'll catch on the um, on the zig We'll see what happens really. I might might change him up again. It depends on what's going to happen. I'm just watching the water and making my changes. Um, uh, yeah, as I as I see. So I don't know yet. I might change to a pink pop up and chuck him out jumping fish um, to see if I can get a take that way as well later on. Uh, but at the moment I'm just going to try this for a little while and see what happens. Well, I've caught nothing on the uh, zig, and I've had nothing on the bottom. Uh, I have still seen a few fish on the uh, on the surface layers, um, but there's less of them than there were earlier. Uh, I've still kept the zig out for a bit longer, as well. Um, I've actually decided what I'm going to do. 
um, tactically wise to make some changes now I'm gonna make some crazy changes I can completely abandon my spot that I was fishing last night um, because I was actually fishing where the fish were and for some reason I wasn't getting anything oh, I don't know why that is but nothing I can do about that really I mean I tried 24 hours on, on that spot and nothing's happened in past experience on these on these lakes I usually seem to catch them either on the island or in the margins yeah so I decided to put both on the island um, I, I've actually put one close to the island where I was actually fishing uh, about six foot off now I'm fishing right up tight um, so I'm still fishing in the same area that I put the bait in but I'm just fishing a little bit more uh, closer to the island because for some reason I seem to get all my bites in the island or on the margin I've tried in open water I've never got anything in the open water so I'm making some changes I've also changed to uh, a pop-up that I've shaved down um, it was an orange one that I've shaved down uh, I'm also going to be putting on a shaved down pink pop-up as well and basically when I'm shaving them down I'm making them so small that they're basically like wafters because the rondery is really heavy so I'm shaving them right down so they become like a sort of between a waffle and a pop-up I suppose when I'm tipping on maggots they do sink a little bit more um, and as they take on water they will sink as well a little bit more and they will become wafters eventually on the bottom and I'm going to put the other one out um, on an island that I haven't really fished anywhere near yet um, I did put a little bit of bait on it last night because I saw a fish jump so I, as a backup plan I really thought about it yeah so I'm going to try that out something a bit bright this time instead of something white or I was fishing actually on the other one a little washed out sort of yellowy dumbbell wafter but that hasn't worked either I'm trying everything to really to try and get a bite I've only got one more night to go so I don't really want to spend too much time mucking around and waiting or, or, or waiting on the spot just thinking I'm not going to catch anything at all and I put some bait up in the, in the margins and if I see any fish jumping down there I might try it down there as well but we'll see um, yeah, I'm going to make some changes and hopefully it will make a difference. Well, while I'm waiting for a bite, I might as well talk about how to tie a maggots on to the end of a bait on the Rodney rig. First take a bait floss, now you want a longer piece because you're going to need the tags to put the maggots on. Put your bait on as normal and push it up to the swivel, then you can get a sewing needle and put on your maggot straight onto the needle, as many as you want, and then put the eye of the sewing needle down the biggest part of the floss you have, so you have two tags and you put it down to the end of that and then you thread the maggots on very slowly onto it um, it's a bit fiddly but you can actually just tease them down until you can pull out the tag and then you can actually tie both pieces together uh, a couple of granny knots should do it and hold it in place uh, make sure you do at least two or three don't just do one because it could come undone there you go that's how you tie maggots onto the end of a Ronnie rig well hopefully it'll make a difference in my, in my session hopefully I'll catch on the maggots and I can prove the point that maggots are a brilliant bait to try in the winter oh well haven't had anything this afternoon uh, seen plenty of carp jumping out but they don't seem to want to feed at all which is a bit of a shame really um, they see them jumping now <laughs> oh, um, yeah I'm happy with the spots, I'm happy with the bait yeah, now so I'm just going to leave it oh, it's going to be cold tonight, I don't think it's going to be very good for carp fishing but we'll see um, hopefully I'll get at least one carp and that will do, I'll be happy with that nothing for the night pretty boring really and uh, pretty cold, which is always fun. Oh, what's that? Little knock. Uh, loads of carp jumping out, and there's, there seems to be loads of them on the surface as well. I don't know what's going on in this lake. There clearly is a problem in this lake. They can't, they can't be swimming around the surface in the end of November. That's just crazy. I never seen anything like it. Oh. Yeah, they seem to be jumping out and on the surface all the time. I'm, I'm sure there is some kind of oxygen problem or something like that I don't know what to do really um, 
I don't think I'm going to get anything because they're just not bothering to feed. I think they're just put off by what was happening in the lake and not really doing anything at the moment. Well, hopefully I'll catch a carp that's not so affected by the auction or whatever's going on in the lake. Um, but we'll see. I'm give it into about possibly 12 o'clock and then I'm going to pack up and go. So I'm going to see what happens until then and uh, hopefully something happens. It'd be nice to just end with a carp. I don't even care what size it is at the moment. A carp's a carp. I would like to end with at least one. Well, I don't think I'm going to catch anything this time. It looks like there's an oxygen problem or some issue in the lake and the carp are on the surface most of the time and they don't want to feed. It's just really weird this time of year. Um, but bonus, when I was leading around at the beginning, I uh, snagged a spawn, which is quite good. And I've been looking around the place and I also found a bivy peg as well, which is really good. So, you know, no carp, but gained a spawn and another peg. Don't forget to check out the blog. The link is in the description below. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.